good evening sir and uh, now i think we can start good evening uh, good evening everyone this is dr sayed yasser the resident radiation oncologist from gsl cancer hospital and research institute so today we are going to have a discussion on the oral cavity malignancies so starting uh, let us go with the subsites of the oral cavity the subsets of the oral cavity are one is the lip then uh, another one is the heart palate upper and uh, superior and inferior alveolar ridges the oral tongue the floor of mouth retromolar trigon and the buccal mucosa these are the subsets of the oral cavity what we are going to discuss later in the in the with the division of each subset malignancy so the carcinoma of oral cavity is the most commonest non cutaneous malignancy of the head and neck and the incidence is twice in the men than women and the five year overall survival of all stages is 64 percentage and the primary site of the primary site the five year overall survival is 83 percentage so again uh, here we can see the oral cavity and posteriorly we are having oro naso and uh, the hypopharynx where the malignancies can extend and superiorly we are having the nasal cavity and uh, inferiorly you can having uh, you are having the hyoid bone and other parts where which you are seeing this uh, slide is just meant for uh, orienting you towards uh, the anatomy and these are the regions which are uh, most common in the, the incidences of the oral malignancies have been found due to the nature of their tobacco chewing and all so you can see that the america the parts of the america and the india pakistan and the most part of the other countries are affected with this i mean the epidemi epidemiology <clears throat> here here we are having uh, different different kinds of exposure here in that the environmental exposure uh, with the tobacco carcinogen that forms the higher risk and uh, the smoking acts as an independent factor uh, causing 80 to 90% of risk that is it raises tobacco smoking causes the, the raises the risk of the malignancy in the oral and oropharyngeal carcinoma from 5 fold to 25 fold and the cessation decreases the risk in india the betel nut leaf uh, along in uh, combined with the lime and tobacco in it uh, that is known as the pan is the most common uh, thing which is causing the cancer of the oral cavity in india along with the independent other factor that is the alcohol also causes uh, uh, raises the risk of the development of the oral cavity cancer and uh, the oral alcohol and the tobacco if they are combined together they give the give the synergistic uh, synergistic effect for the development of the malignancies of the oral cavity and the pharynx and uh, the ultraviolet radiation of the carcinoma of the lip in the 60 that forms the 60% of the oral cavity cancers in the sun exposed geographical area is also a risk factor and uh, though the role of the hpv is well documented in oropharyngeal and it is uh, unlikely in the oral cavity and just uh, the hpv related uh, carcinomas are of 4% which are occur in the oral cavity you can see here the trend mm, from the 1975 to the 2013 you are seeing how the oral cavity malignancies are increasing and similarly let's see some syndromes this is zero derma pigmentosum leaf remnant syndrome ataxia telangiectasia bloom syndrome and franconi's anemia these are the syndromes some that are associated with the oral malignancies the oral tongue carcinoma has a worse prognosis more in the young adults and it is not related to hpv that much second primary in the oral cavity if they occur they are well recognized and they cause worse prognosis in the treatment failure and the five year incidence of second primary is 22% out of which the 18% are uh, the oral cavity malignancies quitting tobacco 1 to 4 years reduces the risk up to the 30% it reduces the risk of 30% and uh, when it has to reach 
uh, the non smoker level then the person has to quit the tobacco for 20 years this and some of the chemo prevention strategies are there retinoids cox2 inhibitors egfr inhibitors thal halidazone dons and green tea polyphenols these are the chemo prevention strategies that delay the occurrence of the carcinoma but uh, it is not recommended uh, to use these things just they are found associated with it and this you are seeing the age wise uh, the incidence that increases from uh, the uh, from the age of the 40 and uh, and thereby up to 75 or 80 years it will be there and coming to molecular biology of these things here the oncogenes increase and the tumor tumor suppressor genes deactivation causes the mucosa from changing the normal to the displaced to the invasive cell carcinoma. And uh, these normal mucosa of uh, the oral cavity and transforming into the invasive squamous cell carcinoma, there some things happen like the loss of heterozygosity of 3P4, uh, 3P14 and 9P22 as well as the mutation of 7, 17P13 uh, that causes the tumor, 50, uh, tumor P 53 suppressor gene instabilities that is causing uh, the cell to become the invasive squamous cell carcinoma. And other, way, and other mutations of other things like 7P53, P1K, 3C, and uh, HRAS and C, CDK and NA2. These are all also found, these mutations are also found to are implicated in the development of the uh, Carcinoma of the oral cavity from the normal, the invasive squamous cell carcinoma. And um, HRAS and P1K3 mutations uh, are associated with improved clinical outcomes. And the notch in the other malignancies, the importance of the notch is that it acts as a oncogen there, but in the oral cavity, its uh, role is as tumor suppressor gene. The liquid biopsy that uh, analyzes the tissue fluid or the saliva and the blood. Uh, gives a promise in the early detection of the carcinomas, recurrent carcinomas. Coming to the pathological classification here, we see that 90% of the uh, oral cavity malignancies are of the squamous cell carcinoma type. That is, in that, again, there are the other variants like the basaloid and the varicose variants. And uh, the basaloid is associated with the more uh, malignant potential and uh, causing uh, decreased overall survival and uh, at the presentation itself, it's a locally advanced disease. When compared with the varicose, uh, varicose is less malignant and uh, uh, usually presents with less advanced stage and uh, its overall survival is better. Another one is uh, the sarcomatite carcinoma with the sarcomatite features. And less than 10% of the oral cavity car carcinoma are uh, the, are found with the histological features of the melanoma, adenocarcinoma, ameloblastoma, lymphomas, kaposi sarcomas, these histologies are there. So 90% of all are found with the squamous cell carcinoma here. Coming to the spread of uh, the carcinoma of oral cavity, usually the spread is again divided into the local spread, lymphatic metastasis, distant metastasis. So here the local spread maybe to the adjacent uh, subsites or ad adjacent cities. And uh, whereas the lymphatic metastasis, maybe from the involving from the... From uh, the lymphatic meds, maybe from uh, the lymph node level one or level two, level three, level four to level five up to. And the distant meds usually is common in the lungs than bones than in the liver. So here the lymphatic metastasis is a important factor. Usually the clinical presentation itself of the most of the oral cavity malignancies is with the lymph nodes. So that will uh, about the lymph nodes and uh, what are the regions of lymph nodes we will see uh, in the later. And regarding distant meds, first is the pulmonary metastasis. What, uh, what the oral cavity malignancy spread and then is to the bone, 
then it's to the liver then it's to the other small cells coming to the clinical features of uh, the oral malignancies usually the tongue malignancies of the tongue squamous cell carcinomas of the tongue the presence of the small ulcers at the early lesions and when they become advanced they either present with the exophytic growth or uh, ulcerative lesions usually if it is uh, the malignancies of the tongue there will be 30 to 40 percent of the cervical node metastasis at the time of the presentation itself coming to the floor of mouth these lesions either present uh, uh, as the infiltrative or they may present as uh, the proliferative growth so that that may invade the bone muscles of the floor of the mouth muscles of the floor of the mouth and as well as that may invade the bone coming to the alveolar ridge subside usually the patient presents with the pain while shaving then uh, you present with the loose tooth or ill fitting dentures and uh, when it comes to the malignancy of the retromolar trigone usually the present with the exophytic lesion that is growing in the oral cavity and uh, less there are the less chances of the bony invasion in the retromolar trigone and the advancements causes the trismus in the retromolar trigone region malignancies i put the buccal mucosa they either present with the papillary or the ulcerative lesions usually at the presentation itself the lesions are uh, early uh, present at the early stage with the t1 lesions only and the heart palate mainly the lesions are painless the patient comes or the presence with the irregularity in the mucosa or ill matches am i audible nigam hello nigam am i audible so <clears throat> let us see hello i am an audible yes sir you are audible go uh, with here so this is a patient of uh, the carcinoma of lip what we are seeing here presented with a uh, ulcerative and a proliferative growth there and uh, these are on my patients and this you are seeing the carcinoma of tongue with the exophytic growth there and the patient uh, this patient you can see that this is again the carcinoma of tongue Uh, with the proliferative lesion extending towards uh, towards the lower alveolar ridges, and uh, here you can see the uh, ulcerative lesion in the carcinoma of tongue that uh, that is extending into the floor of mouth. Actually, in this you can see the carcinoma of uh, tongue, the exophytic lesion that is extending upwards, and this is the carcinoma of heart palate. What you are looking uh, involving up to the total. Uh, bilaterally up to the alveolar ridges and anteriorly towards the incisors so coming to the pre malignant lesions what are the pre malignant lesions uh, which are found in the oral cavity so there are many but uh, to the interest here and the most important are the three conditions one is the leukoplakia one is the erythroplakia and another is the oral submucous fibrosis here so the leukoplakia this is the leukoplakia usually so the leukoplakia is a condition where uh, a whitish patch can be seen which cannot be rubbed off and which cannot be characterized as any other disease that is the leukoplakia usually and uh, this is the most common precursor lesion that develops into the malignancy of the uh, that develops into the squamous cell carcinoma here and uh, this malignancy uh, the leukoplakia has the potential ra ranging from the 1 to 18% to develop into the invasive squamous cell carcinoma and usually it uh, the management depends upon the biopsy and uh, 
followed by excision and all. And uh, coming to the next one is uh, the erythroplakia. So erythroplakia is uh, a lesion, uh, the reddish lesion usually uh, that cannot be described by the, uh, that cannot be related to any traumatic or inflammatory or any vascular lesion. And this erythroplakia is more, much more malignant, much more has the malignant potentiality compared to the all other precancerous lesion and its development in the invasive squam squamous cell carcinoma is of greater than 50 percentage usually. So the management is surgical excision here for the leukoplakia. And this one is the oral submucosal fibrosis, what you're seeing. Most common implicated, uh, most common implicated etiological factor is pan chewing and all is most commonly seen uh, most commonly seen in the patient who, who regularly chew the pan and all. There are the fibrous bands present uh, causes uh, causes the trismus and uh, the patient is more prone for the development of the oral squamous cell carcinoma. So, <clears throat> what brings uh, what should bring a patient to a to an oncologist or a, to a doctor in a the oral cavity and that is related to the malignancy is the persistent red or white patch in the oral cavity non-healing ulcer sudden onset of the sudden onset of the tooth mobility without app and any lesion with the induration on the palpation and sudden onset of the paresthesias of the lip or the tongue dysphagia chronic earache Trismus of unknown cause and persistent cervical lymphadenopathy, which cannot be proved as uh, due to the infectious cause. So these are the conditions which are associated. Uh, if found, they are associated with malignancies. You can see again at the angle of mouth, you can see the lesion, and again the buccal mucosa you are, you are seeing an ulcerative lesion, and this is again the buccal mucosa showing an ulcerative lesions and this is the again casino of tongue showing ulcerative lesion. This is from the retromolar trigon and this is the casino of the floor of mouth. Yeah, like, again, coming to the, let us go, but let us, uh, let me introduce you to the lymph node level, different, different lymph node levels that are important in the skull, uh, in the malignancies of the oral cavity. Usually, the lymph node regions which are present in the neck are divided into the, are divided uh, by the Robbins at all, into the various divisions. The malignancy of the oral cavity usually, usually metastasis to the one to five lymph nodes, within the one to five lymph nodes. So there are other uh, lymph nodes, but malignancies of the oral cavity are just limited from one to five. Though rarely there may be the other presentations also. So here there are certain lymph nodes. One is uh, the lymph node level one is again divided into one A and one B. One A and one B. Here you can what we can see is level one lymph nodes are divided into level 1A and 1B. 1A is the submental and 1B is the submandibular here. Again, here we are having two in that again, the two is divided into 2A and 2B here, usually. And 2A, how and 2B, how they are divided is by the means of spinal accessory nerve or the interjugular vein, they are divided into 2A and 2B. If the spinal accessory now comes and uh, it is uh, divides into 2A and the 2B here. So 2A is the anteriormost part will be the and 2B will be the posteriormost part. And you are having lymph node level 3 and lymph node level 4 and uh, then you are having lymph node level 5. 2 is the upper jugular group of the lymph nodes. Again 3 is the middle jugular group and uh, 4 is the lower jugular group. And, Five is the posterior triangle group, and six is anterior compartmental group. These are the lymph node levels 
which are divided uh, which are divided divided as per the metastasis as as per the oral cavity lesions or other lesions which metastasis to these uh, lymph uh, to this type of the lymph nodes which are present and uh, why these are important why the division is takes place uh, why there are these much division is here these uh, depending upon particular site the risk of involvement of those particular group of the lymph node increases and uh, uh, then rad neck dissections are dependent upon these uh, level uh, level of group lymph nodes as well as for the radiotherapy also for the planning and to give the radiotherapy to those lymph node is based upon this neck uh, this lymph node division set up So you can uh, see one is uh, the submental and uh, one is submandibular, two way upper, two upper jugular, three is middle jugular, four is lower jugular. Again, posterior triangle five. It is divided into five A and five B, and it is six. And coming to the one A, let us talk about one A. One A starts from the submental, uh, mental symphysis. Uh, to the posteriorly you are having the hired bone and uh, 1b is uh, extending uh, 1b the laterally extend uh, laterally it has it uh, the area extends from the mandible to the medially uh, we are having the digastric muscle and uh, anteriorly mental symphysis again and the posteriorly submandibular lymph nodes and uh, 1b uh, after 1B, we are having the two uh, level two group of lymph nodes. Anteriorly, we will be having their submandibular lymph nodes. Posteriorly, the posterior uh, border of the uh, stenocleidomastoid. Superiorly, it will be extending up to the base of the skull and inferiorly to the bifurcation of the <clears throat> carotid artery or, or at the hyoid bone. And from the hyoid bone to the cricoid cartilage is the extension of the level three. And from there, from the cricoid to the clavicle is the level four lymph nodes. And whatever the lymph nodes which you find in the clinical examination that are posterior to the posterior border of the stenocleidomastoid is level five lymph nodes. And coming to the staging here, uh, here recently uh, in the staging they have inter introduced the depth of invasion as a criterion for uh, the stage uh, for T staging and T0 have been removed. Invasion into the extrinsic tongue muscles as a criterion for upstaging tumors has been removed. The cutaneous lip malignancies have been removed from staging of the oral cavity and moved into the staging of the system for the cutaneous cancer. And introduction of the separate neck clinical and pathological uh, staging systems and neck staging now includes the extranodal extension as a criterion for upstaging the disease here we'll learn each by each thing here <clears throat> so any staging of any malignancy involves three things that is the tumor size and tumor extension how it is and the lymph node extension how it is and the extent of the metastasis here usually tx we use where the tumor cannot be assessed tis we used for the carcinoma in situ lesions even if the lesion is less than two centimeters, less than or equal to two centimeters with the depth of invasion, less than or equal to five millimeter. Initially, uh, in the previous staging systems, uh, the depth of invasion was not a criterion. It is recently added. And uh, the depth of invasion plays an important role in deciding the T staging. Also. Again, if you go to the T2, it is less than or equal to two centimeter tumor with the depth of invasion greater than five to less than, uh, less than or uh, equal to 10 millimeters. Or else the tumor can be two to four centimeters with the depth of invasion less than 10 millimeters also. In the T3, if you see two to four centimeters tumor with the depth of invasion greater than 10 or uh, directly it can be greater than four centimeters tumors with the depth of invasion less than 10 millimeters. If it is T4 disease, that is moderately advanced or very locally advanced disease. T4A is moderately advanced disease where you can find that the tumor 
is greater than 4 centimeters with a depth of invasion greater than 10 millimeters or whenever it invades the cortical bone of the maxilla or the mandible or involve the maxilla sinus or the skin of the face then it can be taken as t4a whereas t4b it must be invading the masticator's face or pterygoid face or the skull base or encasing the carotid artery to be t4b then only so coming to the nodal staging system nx used by the regional lymph nodes cannot be assessed when an n0 for the no regional lymph node metastasis and n1 when there is single ipsilateral metastasis in the lymph nodes that is less than three centimeters or smallest in the greater dimension with the extra nodal extension negative n2 again is divided into n to a b and c here in the n to a when there were there is single ipsilateral metastasis in the lymph nodes larger than three centimeters but none larger than greater than uh, greater than six centimeters is taken as n to a and similarly if it is multiple then it is n to b if the lymph node metastasis is bilateral then it is n to c with the extra nodal extension being negative and the tumor uh, the node size should be less than six centimeter if the node size is greater than six centimeter or if the external extension is present then it comes into the n3 again in n3 we are having n3a and n3b here in the n3a the lymph node metastasis is larger than six centimeters with external extension being negative then we take it as n3a if the external like extension is positive then we take directly it as N3B here. So depending upon that, uh, the nodal staging will be there. Then coming to the um, distant metastatic staging system, M0 Excuse is me, more sir. distant. Sorry for disturbance. Uh, we have more 10 minutes, sir. OK, OK, OK. So here, um, M0 is no distant metastasis. M1 is the distant metastasis. And Histological grading is grade one is well differentiated, grade two is moderately differentiated carcinoma, grade three is poorly differentiated carcinoma. So, so coming, this is about the nodal system here. N0 is no nodes. N1, you, you can see less than three uh, centimeters. Uh, lymph node what you are seeing and n2a you can see uh, you are seeing greater than three centimeters and n2b is uh, ipsilateral multiple lymph nodes and n2c you can see the contralateral uh, lymph nodes that is n2c and uh, n3 you can see single lymph node which is uh, or multiple lymph nodes might be there uh, none uh, if it is greater than six centimeter and n3b what you are seeing here with uh, the extra nodal extension here. That is N3B, that is the nodal system here. So if it is uh, two centimeters, how it is there and how we take, we are going to discuss here. See how T1, if it is less than two centimeters, that is the less than two centimeters, T2, two to four in the tongue and T3 greater than four. Similarly, now newly as uh, depth of invasion came, that causes uh, the uh, changing of the T staging and that causes and that has the prognostic significance. And this is the plumb line that is used for the depth of invasion criteria. Then coming to the principles of imaging here. <clears throat> so after the history and the physical examination and complete identical examination and then when we took a biopsy and it has been came to a squamous cell or a malignancy of the oral cavity, then we considered the CT and we can consider a, a PET CT in some conditions and uh, a panrex and uh, the CT or MRA of the primary neck and the pre anesthetic studies and dental evaluation, nutrition, speech, valuing and evaluation therapy, smoking cessation, counseling, and fertility or reproductive counseling. That should be by the multidisciplinary con uh, consultation by radiation, medical and surgical oncologist and along with the plastic surgeon, 
I am the speech and nutrition therapist and nurse and other people. So here the are the principle of imaging. There are some things uh, whether the MRI is better or uh, whether the CT is better. Uh, most of them uh, uh, are confusing. The MRI is preferred over CT in the following conditions. In the oral cavity, if there is need to evaluate the extent of the bone marrow invasion on the patient with extensive dental amalgam, that may obscure the anatomy of the CT. The MRI is preferred over CT. And the CT is complementary to the MRI in certain things, like the oral cavity cancer to evaluate the cortical bone erosion or the perostal invasion. And uh, when there is a recurrence or else, we can uh, go for the PET CT and the panoramic dental x ray is uh, mandatory before going to the radiotherapy, uh, before starting the radiotherapy and all to remove for the dental extraction or any Ill, Ill fitting dentures and all to rule out the hair. So then uh, the nodal evaluation depending upon the CT or uh, the MRI with the help of CT or MRI and if we if there is a distant metastatic uh, if we are going for surgery we can go for FDG, uh, FDG PET scan PET CT scan to rule out any distant metastasis. So after evaluating uh, after getting the biopsy report or uh, after confirming it to be a malignancy then uh, getting the CT or MRI for uh, seeing the tumor extent as well as uh, nodal involvement. And uh, after doing this, uh, the tumor extent and uh, nodal involvement, we can stage the tumor into again uh, different categories. If it is T1 to T2 with the no node, then we can go for the surgery. That is the resection is preferred. Again, after the resection in the post-op histopathology, if uh, we found it to be positive margin, we can consider it for re-resection or we can consider it for post-operative radiotherapy in the patient. If the resection is found, uh, we have found the perineural invasion is there or the vascular or the lymphatic invasion is present, then we have to consider it uh, for the post-operative adjoint radiotherapy here. If the negative margins are there and there is no perineural or the lymphatic invasion, then we can keep the patient on the follow-up. Or else we can go for the definitive RT in certain conditions where the patient is not fit for surgery or patient is not willing for surgery. In that conditions, we can go for definitive RT. But surgery is the preferred modality in T2 and T1, T2 perineural patients. And for the T3, T4A and N0 and T4, T1 to T4 and N1 to N3, then we have to see the surgical feasibility, whether it is surgically fit or not. If it is, uh, if it is surgically preferable uh, in the T3, T4A in N0 and T1 to T4 and N1 to N3, we prefer surgery um, if there is no nodes, a resection of the, uh, in the, we perform the resection of the primary, plus or minus ipsilateral or bilateral neck dissection. And uh, in N1, N2A, N2 and N2B and N3, resection of the primary ipsilateral neck dissection or else we can plus or minus contralateral neck dissection. If it is N2C, then we have to usually go for the bilateral neck dissection along with the resection of the primary. And depending upon these, then if there is an N0, if there is no node to be found, we can keep the patient on the follow-up if any one positive node comes without adverse features, we can go for directly post-operative adjuvant RT. Or if the adverse features are present with extranodal extension or margin being positive, then, then we can consider the patient for the systemic therapy, that is the chemotherapy along with the radiotherapy. Or else we have to think for resection. Or other risk features we have to consider for RT, then we can keep the patient on the follow. Or else, we can, if he is not, patient is not uh, fit for surgery, then we can go for the definitive radiotherapy. Here. Then if it is T4B and N0 to N3, then we depend upon the performance status by the Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group. That is, the performance status is 0 to 1, 
then we can consider for the concurrent systemic uh, is uh, concurrent chemo radiotherapy if it is performance status 2 then we can just consider for radiotherapy or in sometimes systemic therapy as well as with uh, along with the radiotherapy if the performance status is 3 then we have to consider for palliative art or other single agent systemic therapy or we have to provide if it is if he is having poor performance status then we can give provide is best we can provide is best supportive care then if it is then we can keep uh, then we can evaluate later after uh, the therapy the patient there and if it is at the initial presentation if it is metastatic then we can consider for local uh, local region treatment based upon uh, the primary set algorithms again based upon the performance status if it is performance status is nice 0 to 1 that is combination systemic therapy or single agent system therapy and uh, surgery or the radio therapy depending upon the performance status if it is to in single agent systemic therapy or best good performance status is 3 the best thing we can prefer, uh, we can give is best support care so in the the, uh, the dental evaluation and the management is necessary before going to the radio therapy or the surgery to prevent uh, dry mouth strategies and dental caries and these are all effective measures to prevent uh, uh, the complication at a later date coming to the radio therapy yeah, this is the management the management what i have told you this is for the management of of our uh, the casum of the lip what i have what i have told you. that uh, in the, the radio therapy usually for the high risk areas that is the primary tumor and the involved lymph nodes of the lip and uh, that includes the possible subclinical infiltration of the primary site and the high risk level lymph node and we give 66 gray to 70 gray with the fractionation either a 2.2 gray per fraction we use 66 and 70 gray that is 2 gray per fraction on monday to friday and for low to intermediate risk sites we go for the 44 to 50 gray and uh, the external beam radiotherapy can be combined with the bracket therapy you can go with the ldr or the hdr ldr usually we go up to 0.4 to 0.5 gray per hour and uh, hdr usually 21 gray at three fractions and when we are going for the concurrent systemic therapy along with the radio therapy then for the high risk we go for typically up to 70 gray that is 2 gray per fraction we give and for low to intermediate risk areas we go for 44 to 50 gray that is 2 gray per fraction and uh, post operatively uh, the preferred interval is less than 6 weeks after the, the resection of the primary tumor then in the post operatively the planning target volume we can have the high risk to the high risk side we can give 60 to 66 blood tongue and the heart palate all other subsites except the casum of the lip we are going to discuss it. after the initial workup when we found it to be t1 to t2 with the load negative then we can go for the the surgery that is the preferred modality with the resection of the primary without the neck dissection if it is uh, even in t2 early lesion or if we can go with the ipsilateral or the bilateral uh, neck dissection if you have a suspicion and then and dissection of uh, the primary we can go uh, with the sentinel lymph node biopsy usually and the sentinel lymph node biopsy is uh, is an another uh, other modality which can be done prior to the elective nodal dissection and we can directly go for definitive if it is not a surgical candidate then depending upon 
the surgery if the no positive nodes or no adverse futures are there we can keep him on on the follow up if one positive node we can consider for rafting and if adverse futures like extranodal extension outside of the node the tumor is extending or uh, we have got a positive margin where there is still the tumor is there then we can consider the patient for the systemic radiotherapy uh, systemic therapy along with the radiotherapy then if the patient has uh, and those are all if the positive margin is there again we can plan for resection if it is not possible then we can go for a radiotherapy if other risk factors are there we can consider for radiotherapy or else systemic therapy plus radiotherapy if the tumor size uh, if the t staging is 3 with the no nodes or with the t 1 to 3 with the nodes 1 to 3 the surgery we go preferred and uh, with n0 n1 for n2 a and ab a resection of primary along with the epilateral or the bilateral neck dissection and if it is n2 c as a disease bilateral we will go for the bilateral neck dissection if de depending upon that if there are no adverse features we can consider for radiotherapy as the disease is extensive here p3 uh, and as well as uh, nodes are there and uh, if it is t4a we can consider for uh, the radiotherapy here. if the adverse features are found then again depending upon that if extranodal extension is there or positive margin is there other uh, risk uh, features adverse features we can consider for the systemic therapy plus or minus radiotherapy and uh, if it is newly diagnosed or unresectable uh, nodal disease then depending upon the performance status what we have discussed in the casm of lip also the same management applies here and similarly the management for the metastatic is also same as it is for the lip also. and uh, coming to the radiotherapy for uh, the buccal mucosa uh, retromolar trigone the heart palate and all here the high risk usually the primary that is the primary tumor and the involved lymphatics uh, that uh, the involved lymph nodes that is uh, includes a possible local subclinical infiltration to primary site or the risk level lymph nodes which are uh, attributable uh, to the involved uh, site primary site we can go from the 66 day to the 70 day from monday to friday in 6 to 7 weeks or we can go with the concomitant boost accelerated due to the therapy or the hyperfractionation schedules if it is low to intermediate risk then we can deliver 44 to 50 gray and <clears throat> we can use the brachytherapy uh, for the early lesions here and on the earlier from 0.4 to 0.5 gray per hour and hdr is 21 gray and again three fractions and delivery of the radiotherapy in uh, the lip or uh, other sides of the oral malignancy is the intensity modulated radiotherapy is best when compared to the others other uh, techniques that is 3d conformal or the conventional uh, radiotherapy techniques usually and uh, if uh, the malignancies are more advanced with the bone invasion and all the proton based therapy is uh, the best when compared with the and other forms of the intensity modulated radiotherapy advancements like a uh, volumetric gas therapy have been come now the uses of that decreases uh, the treatment modality time and as well as a uh, space the structures that are and uh, the organs and the risk better so we go for the high end techniques like imr technology if uh, the patient has been considered for the post operative rt the patient has been sent for the post operative rt uh, that's because of either adverse features like uh, extranodal extension is there or if uh, the primary uh, tumor p3 stage uh, t3 or t4 stage tumors are there or with the adverse features uh, like perineural invasion or uh, perineural invasion or uh, extranodal extension or the positive margins then we can go for the post operative radiotherapy that is <clears throat> within the 6 weeks it is preferable and for the high risk we can go for the 60 to 66 gray here and for the low to intermediate risk sites that is the sites of the suspected subclinical 44 to 50 gray 
and again here the preferred modality of radiotherapy delivery will, will be with the intensity modulated <clears throat> and these are the some uh, principles of uh, the surgery where the tumor involved sites whenever it is associated with the poor prognosis or function or with the t4 b <clears throat> undesectable that is the undesectable uh, and none of these sites of the involvement is an absolute contraindication to the resection that is uh, involvement of the pterygoid muscles or particularly when associated with the ciliate trismus or the gross extension to the tumor uh, to the skull base or direct extension to the superior nasopharynx or deep extension into the stagen tube or invasion to the common or internal carotid artery direct extension to the neck disease uh, to involve the external skin and direct extension to the mediastinal structures prevertebral fascia or the cervical vertebrae or presence of subdermal metastasis similarly <clears throat> the evaluation here uh, there is the surgical evaluation and uh, tumor primary tumor resection um, what we require for uh, the uh, what we require for the surgery and uh, for the surgery is meant for that is the end block resection of the primary tumor should be attempted whenever the feasible in continuity the uh, neck dissection is necessary and uh, resection should be planned based on the extent of the primary tumor as a second with a clinical examination and uh, perineural infection uh, perineural invasion should be suspected when the tumors are adjacent to the motor or the sensory nerves and the goal is total cancer resection and the partial or the segmental resection of the mandible may be necessary to adequately encompass the cancer with adequate tumor free margins and the medullary space invasion is an indication for the segmental resection and uh, transporal robotic surgery or laser assisted resections of the primary cancers in the oral cavity larynx and pharynx are increasingly used approaches for cancer resection in the selected patients with the limited and accessible tumors the neck management usually uh, for n0 the oral cavity at least level 1 to 3 uh, are preferable when with the higher adverse uh, risk features are there and if for n1 n2 a to c the selective or the comprehensive neck dissection for n3 it's comprehensive neck dissection what you can do and uh, similarly the sentinel lymph node biopsy what we have to see here is an alternative to the elective neck dissection here and for identifying the occult cervical metastasis in the patient with the early oral cavity carcinoma in the centers their expertise for this procedure is available it can only be used uh, where there is uh, where they have been ex experienced in these procedures and all its advantages include a reduced morbidity and improved cosmetic outcome and rates of detection of the sentinel lymph node in excess is 95% have been widely reported but it all depends upon the experience here and um, it's better to go for a neck node dissection elective neck node dissection when going uh, before going to the sentinel lymph node biopsy though the use of the sentinel lymph node biopsy has been growing but elective uh, nodal elective neck dissection stand first and uh, coming to the principles of the systemic chemotherapy here the we go for the high dose splatin along with the when we are delivering the radiotherapy mm, that is the 100 mg per meter square usually the high dose splatin is a three weekly regimen every three weeks along with the concurrent radiotherapy or else we can go for the carboplatin or the infusional free of you yeah the difference between the going for the high dose splatin or the carboplatin weekly carboplatin is just uh, the when compared with the cisplatin and carboplatin the carboplatin is found to be less efficacious when compared with the cisplatin and uh, high dose cisplatin acts as a system agent uh, plus radio sensitizer also and post operative again we can go for the cisplatin depending upon the patient performance status we can either plan for the, the weekly uh cisplatin or if the pay performance status is good then we can go for three weekly cisplatin also 
or induction of the sequential systemic therapy before if the tumor size, if they are locally advanced tumor, we can go for the TCF, that is docetaxel cisplatin or the 5 fib regimens. And coming to the follow-up recommendations, STN again, physical examination yearly uh, for first year, every one to three months. And second year, every two to six months, we can call the patient. And uh, three to five years, four to eight months, we can call. Rather than five, every one yearly, we can call. And we have to repeat the thyroid stimulating hormone. Then we have to do dental evaluation. We have to do examination and consider for the EBU DNA monitoring for the nasopharyngeal carcinomas. That is category 2B evidence and speech, hearing, swallowing evaluation, nutritional evaluation, and uh, surveillance for the depression and smoking cessation and alcohol consumption. Those we have to do. And after systemic therapy or uh, combined with the radiotherapy, then we have to, or radiotherapy alone, we have to clinical assess for after four to eight weeks. So if there is a residual primary, uh, the persistent disease is there, then we have to. Uh, go with the CT or MRI of the FGD, um, that is the PET CT. Then we have to confirm the residual disease or the persistent disease. If it is resectable or unresectable, we have to do, decide. Then if the response is there, then we can assess the extent of the disease with the hot discharge metastasis with the PET CT minimum after the 12 weeks. Or in the CT of the primary neck and the MRI, we can do uh, 8 to 12 weeks in between. Then depending upon positive or negative, we can, if it is negative observation, if it is positive, then we have to go for the FDG, uh, PET CT. Then upon the PET CT, if it is negative, we can keep on observation. If it is equivocal observation, or we can repeat it three to six months later. If it is strongly positive, CT or MRI, we have the contrast and we have to go for again, perhaps either a resection or neck nodal dissection. If it is perfect. Thank you, everyone. Hope uh, it was last session. And uh... yes, sir, uh, it was a bit lengthy. Thank you, Dr. Syed, for the nice informative session. And the next session we are conducting is uh, on Sporters of Neurology. You can register here. You can go to LearnPad and can go to upcoming session. And you can see here on 28th, 29th, we are having uh, spotters in neuroradiology. So you can register for free. Thank you. Meet you in the next session.